Hey guys, this is Kevin aka Kman1, and with this inventory I should hit a summoning level, which should also mean level 90 combat, so I can finally use Simona, the Slayer, Matri the Slayer Master in Paul of Nietzsche. Uh, in order to get there, I'm probably going to go ahead and move my house portal and just use the teleport to house spell. I'd use tabs, but tabs are very expensive on the GE, way more expensive than they have any right to be. Uh, but I am going to be continuing the Slayer, grind, the Slayer grind. I've done a little bit. I got from 60 to 63 uh, from the last time I showed you my level. Uh, and I've gotten up magic and hit points and possibly attack or something else. I've specifically wanted to focus magic because I want to get up to 75 magic for my next weapon upgrade. I'm going to go for the Abyssal Wand and Orb. Uh, and then I'm going to see if I can just run straight to 70 defense for God Wars dungeon armor. The way I'm going to be avoiding that is that I've been stockpiling. I haven't drawn attention to it, but I've been stockpi stockpiling some farming runs, specifically the Toad Flax potions. And Limpert Roots aren't great money. I'll get into it later, but it's, it's a little bit of extra cash. Anyways, I'm going to finish up training summoning right here because I want to get 37 for Fairy Tale Part 3. Uh, just so that I don't have to carry around the Draymon staff with me all the time. And I also need to get up thieving to 51. And early game thieving is not very fun, in my opinion. So I'll probably use a handful of different methods to get that up. Anyways, I will see you uh, probably with some quests next. I got a Turoth Slayer task, which means that it's time to go back to the Paul Novich Slayer dungeon. The only things to note about this fight is that Turoths are only susceptible to specific types of weapons, specifically leaf-bladed melee weapons, broad ranged ammunition, and the Slayer Dart spell. Uh, and the other thing is that it spawns minions during the fight, but they're weak as heck, and since I have the full Slayer Helm, this guy's a complete pushover to me, and I expect that the Karask boss will also be a complete pushover once I finally get a Karask task. It's not a quest like I promised, but I figured I might as well go ahead and collect uh, from Kingdom Management. I should mention that I did miss one day of keeping my approval rating at 100% because I was helping my brother move. Thanks, Eric. But it should still be pretty good. Uh, it's only five days, and so I spent 375k to get all this stuff. And yeah, that's that's a lot of stuff. Uh, current reward value: 974,000 coins. Yeah, that that sounds. That sounds about right. So 600k profit for five days, that's 120k a day. It's not amazing, but for literally no effort, that's not that bad. I insta-sold everything on the Grand Exchange. Uh, the biggest moneymaker was obviously the Mahogany Logs, but I actually got pretty lucky and got two Magic Seeds from the Bird's Nest, which I'm pretty stoked about personally, because that's an extra 200k for a grand total of 1.23 mil. That, let's just call it one and a quarter mil for, again, literally zero work and for 300,000 or 375,000 gold. Really, really worth your time. And by your time, I mean the base, base minimum effort that you can possibly give. Not a quest, but a caper. I'm gonna work on the various Thieves Guild things because. I want to get up to 51 thieving for Fairy Tale Part 3. I will also need to complete the feud quest in order to do the Caution Volunteers, but I want to do that as little as possible. Fortunately, I have about 30,000 bonus experience, so once I'm done with the quests and the capers, I'll be able to knock out the rest of the experience that I need really, really quickly. Finished up the Lost your marbles lost her marbles caper which oh wow that's actually a decent chunk of experience and then you kind of need to go back and forth to get all of the rewards for it but suffice it to say you get a decent chunk of experience and you get some various items that you can then resell to the grand exchange which are worth a decent amount but they're not like the new money-making meta, by any stretch of the imagination. 
and boom, there it is, completely com and the rewards altogether, in case you were curious, are worth a little bit over 100k. A decent chunk of change, but nothing spectacular. I'm finishing up the feed quest. It's a little annoying, but it unlocks blackjacking, which is the best experience up until you finally unlock safe cracking, which apparently is like the best thing ever. Uh, everybody seems to love it, but I have never done it before because it came out after I started, or right around the time I started this account, and I never did it on my main. So, I don't know. I'll be experiencing it for the first time on this account. But 15,000 thieving XP, uh, ability to blackjack specifically with the Koshing Volunteers in Thieves Guild, and I will have 51 thieving in no time. So I sold all of the stuff that I got earlier, well that I showed off earlier, the Toad Flax potions and the Limpwort Roots. Again, Limpwort Roots aren't the best money, but I think they're the best money that you can get out of flower patches, but if I go ahead and collect it, I made up just shy of 11 mil. Uh, I insta sold everything. If I slow sold it, I probably could have made a, a decent chunk more, but I would rather just insta sell. And the two big equipment upgrades that I'm looking to make right now, I would go for God War Dungeon Armor, but I'm only level 61 defense, so no reason to drop money on it now. But I want to go for a Amulet of Fury, uh, which is whew, up to 3 mil now. That's no good. And a Ring of Fortune, which is an Enchanted Onyx Ring. And that's almost, that's also at about 3 mil. So a little bit expensive, but if I take the time to show you as compared to the stuff that I've been using as equipment, I'll go ahead and grab those out of my bank. Uh, I've been using a Glory and the Explorer's Ring 3. So if you look at the ring, it's 5 in all stats and a 1 prayer bonus versus a 13 in all stats. No prayer bonus, but it increases your luck, which is a mechanic that basically just affects the rare drop table and your chance of getting valuable stuff. It's not super impactful, it's basically a 3 mil placebo effect, but the stats are definitely nice. Something that I forgot to mention during the recording of this clip is that the Ring of Fortune also includes unlimited teleports to both the Grin Exchange and Miscellanea, making it a much needed upgrade to my current teleports available to me. And the Glory is 26 in all stats and a 2 prayer bonus, versus 32 in all stats and a 3 prayer bonus. It doesn't seem that substantial, but a 6 bonus in a combat style is a lot more powerful than you probably think it is. So feels good, I finally have some decent jewelry items. Again I do want to improve my armor in the future, but there's no reason to, to drop that kind of money if I don't have the defense level to wear it anyways. I'm finishing up Fairy Tale Part 2, which or Part 3 rather which was the big questing goal of this video. It's a relatively easy quest once you've got it. You also get, in addition to being able to use fairy rings without the Draymon staff, you get this magic watering can, which is infinitely full and you can use it on your patches and you can add it to your tool belt so it doesn't take up a, a place in your inventory during farm runs. You can't water herbs, so not that valuable to me, but whatever. And I can finally turn in this quest for a pretty nice experience reward, 35,000 total, and the, the remainder of the rewards that I've mentioned before. No levels though, which is disappointing to say the least. Anyways, with this big questing goal done, I am going to return to the Slayer grind. I'm gonna aim for 75 Slayer, which gets you Gargoyles, which are the first really good money Slayer monster. Everything up until that point is like decent-ish, but Gargoyles are where you really start getting into the good money. So, Slayer Grind, here I come. So I did like one or two more tasks since the last clip, but I realized that there was one big upgrade that I really needed to make in order to make Slayer a little bit better, and that was level 70 prayer, specifically for Piety, Augury, and Rigor. Unfortunately, 
Prayer is a little bit expensive, and I don't feel like dropping 4 mil on Dragon Bones right now. So the solution that I've come to is that I'm going to go ahead and buy the Bone Crusher, because it's something I was going to get eventually anyways. I've got 40,000 Dungeoneering tokens right now. And this will passively bury all bones dropped by monsters. I want to pair it with the split dragon tooth necklace which is somewhere i don't feel like scrolling through to find it that's not it that's it the split dragon tooth necklace which will recharge prayer uh, as bones get buried including bones buried by the bone crusher so that's going to be a really useful equipment upgrade but i do want to get up to those prayers which means there are a couple other quests that i need to complete but using the Bone Crusher will be a really big help in cutting down on the cost of training prayer. I need about 600,000 experience, so using Dragon Bones that would cost like 4 to 5 mil at current prices, which is an amount I'd rather not spend right this very moment. So, just so you know, that's probably what I'm going to be working on between this episode and the next uh, I don't necessarily know other goals. Obviously, I'm going to keep working towards gargoyles. I'm going to do a little bit of engineering to get the dragon tooth necklace, all that stuff. So, I want to go ahead and say thank you very much for watching this episode of Self Sufficient Escape, and I guess I will see you next time.